All right, welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. I am Malaki Velodera, and this is Morning Art and TV. Our guest, Milan Selassie, is an American film producer, writer, best known for his work as the producer on the lifetime hit Back to School Mum. You've heard of it, right? Which was filmed in Cape Town. Now, he is extremely knowledgeable about the film industry and filmography in general. So he's also behind the movie Single Holic. That stars, of course, Powers Snitch Rotimi. Selassie's professional background is mostly in politics and investment banking. He says his experience provided a strong background for him and gave him an insight into the film business, which allowed him to make the best decisions in terms of the projects he chose and how to go about securing finance and distribution. Selassie is here for a visit and, of course, visits for movie producers it come with business and other opportunities for a burgeoning industry like ours. Many thanks for joining us and welcome to the Pearl of Africa. Thank you so very much, Mala. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. I think let's just get into your story and how you left politics, business, which is quite lucrative, I can imagine, and then decided to just take a jump onto film. Wasn't that a risk for you? Absolutely. Um, but I think without any risk, um, one not taken is one not secured. And I had to ask myself two questions. What makes me most happy and what kind of life that I want to live? Uh, what makes me happy was doing something that I absolutely loved. When I reflected on that, I realized that I really enjoyed film. Mm -hmm. And because of my background, I wanted to understand the business side of film. So that helped contribute to my thought process. Right. And then after making that decision, you didn't delve into film directly. You worked for a talent institution. Why was that critical for you? That's a very good question. Um, most of the time, people think about leaving something that they are engaged in and doing something new. But finances are often quite important um, for myself because I had secured some capital and I had saved quite decently. <laughs> Um, I was willing to take a gamble and work for a talent agency, which was the largest in the country, actually in the world. For me, what I realized was if I worked for an agency that allowed me to learn, I could do that and help secure my knowledge base. One of the biggest challenges is, is the fact that people often want to get into a new area without having any knowledge. Right. So eventually what happens is they raise capital and they lose capital, primarily because they're not knowledgeable about how to do the execution. So by me working for the talent agency and taking a very big pay cut, um, that allowed me to learn so that by the time I started up my company, I had a general idea of how to go about doing it mm -hmm. in a risk mitigating factor. Right. How long did you do this for? I worked for the talent agency for about four years and then I started Whoa. up my company about uh, in 2008, so about 12 years ago. Why four years? Well, <laughs> one would argue that the passion was in <coughs> check um, in terms of what you really wanted to do was in check. Then why four years? Why that long? You know, that's a, I can see why you do what you do. You're very good at asking the right questions. Um, one of the things that I realized was I was also very good at working at the talent agency. Mm -hmm. I was able to secure, I knew I could spot talent. I also knew how to identify very good material. So one of the things that most people have to do in their lives is be able to differentiate between what is a signal and what is a noise. Albeit, although I was very good at what I was doing at the talent agency, because I excelled at it, it took me some time before I actually said, wait a second, my original objective was to learn how to produce films. Mm -hmm. So let me take a step back and then focus on my original objective, focus on my internal signal, and not get distracted by the noise. The noise being you're successful at what you do in this new space. Right. Um, and even if you are succeeding in it, um, recognizing what is your ultimate objective. So that four years, uh, was as a result of me just excelling in that space. Mm -hmm. And when I did decide to start my own company, a few months later, the Great Recession happened, yes. which was a very big challenge during that time. Right. So how did you sail through? Here you are, you're done with, you know, I'm working for this particular talent institution. You've started your own thing. I'm an entrepreneur as well. And I know that the first phase is never easy. So here you are, Absolutely. starting your own thing amidst a recession. How did you <laughs> sail through? The reality is actually my f relationship with God. Mm. Um, you know, I believe that when you're a Christian entrepreneur, 
one of the things that you eventually learn is really compassion. Um, because I never wanted to be a burden on my family, I had to dig deep within myself and then dig deep within my relationship with God. And it caused me to have to align what are my objectives. Well, I want to do film. What I also recognized was there is a challenge with how people of color in the States were actually represented in film. Right. My company is called Intelligent Media, and the tagline is creating films that make you think, feel, and smile. And so I made a personal pact with God to say, Lord, if you allow me to succeed in this space, I promise that I will do everything that I can to lift you up and also create content that makes people of color look positive, mm -hmm. not just in the American dynamic, but also in the international diaspora. And I feel like that having a sense of purpose, being true to that purpose and having that relationship with God allowed me to really sail through that time period, which right. was five years. Right. Um, my movie, I pre-sold what they call your film. I pre-sold my movie to, to Lifetime in 2013. So from 2008 to 2013 was five years. Mm -hmm. um, the average time in the States, they say, to make a movie is seven years. Yes. So even during the Great Recession, it didn't take me seven years to, wow. to get the funding. It took me five years. So that felt like, to me, a sign that God was like, I got you. Yeah. And uh, it was, certainly wasn't easy. But when you, when you go through that process, you're a lot stronger mm -hmm. and a lot more confident in yourself and your outcome. I concur, I concur. Um, having that foundation spiritually as an entrepreneur is critical. I mean, in terms of making decisions, taking the next step, everything has to come from that spiritual foundation. Absolutely. Amen to that. Amen, <laughs> absolutely. All right, um, let's go into film. Now, when you look at film and the entertainment industry right here in Uganda, um, it contributes about 140 billion to the economy. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking about <coughs> Uganda shillings. Right. Um, and so the conversation always has been about how can we grow that? Because the potential is greater um, when we host um, actors, film directors, film producers right here, they always say that we still have a huge potential. However, a majority of them cannot rely on film to fend for their families. So they can't rely on it to be an eight to five everyday job. Uh, a majority of them have side hustles, what they call them. Sure. Either they're entrepreneurs on the side or they're running some sort of you know enterprise or business on the side right. to just complement what they get out of acting and out of the film industry right. now my question to you would be as a film producer who's doing amazingly well with the business background give us the a to z of producing film and making it in the film business it's a business as much as it can be passion at the end of the day it has to make monetary sense absolutely so when I think of <coughs> a film I have an amazing script I have an amazing set of actors should I think of that being well it's great of course it's gonna sell or I need to be you know objective about it getting into planning to the sales the distribution and all that what should come first should I work backwards or develop on it as a passion and as a great script Wow Mala you just actually made a comment that I always tell people whether it's actually film or any type of business, in my personal opinion, I think the most important thing is to always work backwards. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? For me, it means thinking about the exit first. If you're raising capital, you have to recognize that if you're getting private capital, you must recoup that capital. So how do you do it? You have to think about what will the budget of the cap, what will be the budget of the film, and you have to think about what will the exit be. By thinking about the exit first allows you to make the critical decisions that are necessary to not only protect your investors, which should always be paramount, but also think about making a very good product. Um, I wanna say also for the local actors that are here, it's completely normal for them to not only focus on their passion, which is acting, especially even if they're exceptional, but also for them to have those side hustles as well. Um, just the other day, two days ago, I was looking up, somebody sent me this, uh, this video of a young comedian named Little JJ. I mean, he was really big back in 2007. I was curious to know what is it that he's doing now. And it turns out that 2007, the individual from that time, he's now working in a pastry shop. And this was an incredibly talented individual. Um, so he's working at a pastry shop today, even though 
back in the day in 2007, he was very well known as a comedian. <laughs> so it's very common for people to do multiple jobs. From a producer perspective, it's always important to number one, think about the cost of the film. Make sure that you have what they call a, a line producer. Right. Have a line producer who's very effective at calculating what the actual costs are gonna be. If you have a bad line producer, they're gonna potentially underestimate what the costs are. Right. If so if the costs are gonna be, let's say for ease of numbers sake, a million dollars, and they forecast that the budget is gonna be $650,000, mm -hmm. then you have a shortfall right. of 350. Right. How do you come up with that capital when you've already started production process? And so you're affecting your crew, you're affecting the content, and eventually you might harm the product. Correct. So being very thoughtful, very diligent about the exit so you can protect your, your investor, mm -hmm. thinking about the product so you mm -hmm. can make sure that you're coming up with very good content mm -hmm. that the audience wants to see. All right. And then also thinking about what the saleability and is this film something that the audience would love to support. Right. If not, then you might not succeed in that. All right. So the exit ideally is back to the coin. Is it sellable? Will, it, will you recoup what you've invested? All right. Let's start with... Absolutely. Fine. Um, let's start with um, that bit whereby you've looked at whether this thing is sellable and indeed it is. So where do I start? I want you to speak to the film producers right here in the country. Like I said, the entertainment industry contributes about 140 billion, um, but a majority of them don't know where to source for the capital. So as a film producer, what has been the trick for you? Where do you go to, to, to source capital from? Who do you talk to? Um, you talked about your investors believing in you. So give them hints and tips right here on how to source for that <coughs> capital. May I also suggest, um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about a few moments ago, and I'm glad you brought this up, mm -hmm. the government should really be involved in making a commitment to the local artists. Um, I have made a movie in South Africa and I just completed a movie in Mauritius. In each of those environments, the commitment of the government to support the local arts is massive. Mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, they give outstanding tax rebates. So they have organizations like the National Film and Video Foundation, which gives grants to promising young local black South African uh, filmmakers. In Mauritius, you can get up to 40% tax oh, wow. rebate, wow. which is fantastic. Right. What does that do? If, let's say, the Ugandan government decided that we want to make a commitment to the entertainment space, and if you look at any analysis on which industries in Africa are going to be growing, mm -hmm. certainly entertainment is one of them. So if the government said, well, look, let's come up with a tax rebate structure that attracts international productions into coming here, what you'll have is a couple of things. One, you'll be bringing skills and development to this country. Mm. Why is that good? It's good because what often happens is people who are here and consume film and TV, probably internationally from the United States and maybe other countries, what ends up happening is they are accustomed to a certain type of quality. Correct. And if filmmakers here locally are creating content that is absolutely subpar because they don't know the importance of lighting, they don't understand the importance of sound, they mm -hmm. don't understand cinematography, then you're coming up with a content and expecting people to support a product just because it's Ugandan, when in actuality dollars are precious. So you must respect the consumer. Right. You must, they must understand the filmmaker. What is it that the audience wants to see? How can we create a quality product without sacrificing, uh, with a consideration to cost, mm -hmm. without sacrificing product mm -hmm. quality? and focus on creating that dynamic if you All do right. the probability of success is strong okay so government has to support Absolutely. at a hundred percent but over and above government doing its beat in terms of the taxes and mm -hmm. the tax regime that supports um you know the film producers where do i go to get this capital if i'm a film producer and um, i've done my math i've done my strategy and i'm like this is something that is workable yeah and i don't have money or i have just you know one percent of the capital that i need to produce that film yes. where do i go to scout for the capital who do i talk to well the same challenges that you got in filmmakers or any entrepreneur here has is mm -hmm. the same that any entrepreneur in any country has in America, you usually have what they call friends and family. Mm -hmm. You go to your friends, you go to your family. Outside of that, you look for people who have a passion in the arts, who may be financially successful and are interested in patroning uh, this space. But you also can't be afraid. 
You have to be willing to knock on doors. There will be moments where you will get several no's. But if you're consistent, if you know your space, meaning understand the financial repercussions, you understand how to monetize the product and how you can recoup for your investors, mm -hmm. it, your, your odds of succeeding in recouping or, or raising capital is quite significant. All right. So once you know that, that bit of recouping that investment and it making sense to your investors, you got it right. You can't go to your investor and say, I have this movie, it's going to be great, it's going to be as big as Black Panther. Yeah. Because then the investor is going to not necessarily look at you as if you're being quite reasonable. Right. Um, so understanding the numbers is quite important. All right. So understanding the market is also very critical. Okay, return on investment. Let's Absolutely. move on to the other conversation. Now the film is out, you've gotten the capital, um, you've done an amazing production, then boom, as much as we were saying that you have to work backwards, it has to sell somewhere. So let's talk about distribution Absolutely. in one minute and how to make sure that indeed that production uh, makes it money back, it's money back. Sure. Yeah. One minute. Sure. <laughs> so how do we oh, no. distribution? Sorry, when you said one minute, I thought <laughs> there was a pause for one minute. No. Um, so it's interesting. You know, earlier on when you asked your initial question, yes. you were talking about the planning process. Right. You have, you have the pre-production, you have the production, you have the post-production. Mm -hmm. And then after you have that film, you think, my gosh, I did it. I got this great film. Then all of a sudden you're like, well, how do I get it to the people? Mm -hmm. So there's, it's a never ending process. So when I say think about the exit first, that also, thinks of, that also incorporates the marketing, that also thinks about your distribution component. Mm -hmm. So before you make that film, you have to think, what are the available outlets for this film? So are we talking about cinemas? So that's the CD question. CD purchases? That's what, this, that's what the producer should be considering. Okay. Is it gonna be a box office theatrical release? If so, who are the main cinema chain owners that actually uh, have a play a significant role right. in this in this market? Right. What about television? Who are the significant players and that would be interested in this product? And then now Netflix is trying to get more into Africa. Would Netflix Africa be interested in this product? Mm -hmm. Looking at the available buyers for your product in your market, think about that extensively. Mm -hmm. And so when you're thinking about that exit first, think about the distribution platforms mm -hmm. that are available. Does your product meet something that they might be interested in? Understanding who are the key players in each of those platforms. Right. Going to some of the conferences, the reason why I'm in Uganda is because I'm looking at potentially partnering with doing some co-productions with this country. Mm -hmm. I love this country and the people with my best friend in the States is actually Uganda. Oh. So for me to be here in Uganda and meet the wonderful people that I've met so far says to me, look, people of integrity, people who I know that I can do business with, right. maybe we can work together, and doing that collaboration I think can be quite promising. So okay. when you're thinking about these platforms, going to these uh, conferences where the buyers are actually there mm -hmm. can go a long way into helping you secure that distribution. All right, thank you and so much. And also the one thing that I'd like to add yes. is marketing is always important. Mm -hmm. Think about who are the biggest, biggest marketing companies here that understand how to market your product to the end consumer? Okay. So when you're thinking about the film, think about your distributors, think about partnering with a marketing company, mm -hmm. and think about the script itself. We didn't really talk about that, right. but ultimately the script is gonna inform what type of movie you're gonna make right. and whether the consumer wants to watch it. Thank you so much, Milan, for coming through. We've Milan. learned quite a bit. It was a um, I hope that you've taken notes. We're going to share this on our YouTube pages so that you can, you know, share and tell a friend to tell a friend, especially them that are in the film industry. However, even if you're in business, you can just get get a tip of, or two, yeah, to boost your business and to do better. 2020, you've got to make it work. All right, many Absolutely. thanks, Selassie. We wish you all the best. Thank you so very much. Yeah. All right, that's it for Tech Note. We're taking a short commercial break. We'll be back with so much more. Stay with us.